Hi, I'm Pam East and today I'd like to teach you how to make this sweet and easy little enamel pendant. Um, it's a very simple project, great introduction to enameling. Anybody can make this pendant. It's going to be a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start out by rolling the clay to eight cards thick. So I do the pre-roll because I'll get a better impression when I, when I roll it out on the stamp. All right, so there I've got it rolled out eight cards thick. And now I'm going to set that aside while I set up a little rolling platform here. Um, this is the stamp I'm going to use, and I'm going to give that a little bit of release agent. And now I'm going to set up some more stamps to put my next um, stack of slats on or rolling frame on. And there we go. And this time I'm going to be using three card thickness. And I'm going to take a, um, a template that has a small design. So this little design, a little, I've got a little flower going here and I'm going to put a little release agent on that as well because I'm going to be rolling directly on this template. So we're going to put that on and we're going to use that as a mask over the texture. So this is going to be really cool. Wait till you see how this comes out. All right, I'm going to put that this way, I think. There we go. And now I'm going to take my pre-rolled clay and I'm going to lay that over that flower. And when you start rolling, start from the middle. Don't start from the end and go across. You'll get doubled images that way. You just want to give it one really firm up and back. And that's it. That should be enough. And now when I pick this up, all right, I have a nice crisp design with that nice flat area around it. Now on this piece the enamel is going to be going on that flat area around the design instead of enameling inside of a design. We're going to give it a nice little shape here. I'm going to decide which way I like it. I don't like it that way. I like it this way. There we go. I'm just going to line it up. I've got my needle tool. All right, I've got a pendant shape going. That's looking pretty good. Put my clay away so it doesn't dry out. And then we're going to cut some holes in the corners because that's how I'm going to hang it. So here, I'm going to put a, hole, a little hole there, a little hole there, and we'll poke the excess clay out of here. Don't waste any clay. Never waste the clay. And now I'm going to dome it slightly. I like to have my enamel pieces slightly domed. They take the enamel better that way and they hold up better that way. So here we go. I've just put it over the dome and there it is. And we're gonna dry that. And when it's dry, we'll come back and do our greenware finishing. All right, I've got the piece dry and I'm ready to do my greenware finishing. I'm gonna start by just smoothing the edges. Um, this shouldn't take you very long. Any kind of a sanding smoothing tool will work. And then I'm going to uh, use a little square file to, oops, I didn't grab the square file. There we go. Um, I'm going to use a little square file to clean up the, the holes. I like using square files for round holes. Um, it sounds a little counterintuitive, but each corner becomes a cutting surface and it works really well. It works better than a round file. And so there we go. I've cleaned up the holes in the corners and brush that off. And now I want to clean up around this design. And I can use some small files. So if I have some bit of texture that's, that's sticking out over the smooth area, I can just go around with a file and clean that up. I want to make sure I keep the side wall 90 degree angle. It should be perpendicular to the base. If I get a slope or an undercut, it's going to have negative effects, negative effects on the enamel. So make sure that you keep it 
straight up and down. And I'm just going to go around my design with the file. And again, this doesn't take very long. And once you've gone all the way around, um, if you've got any smoothing to do, a really nice tool is, this is a disposable eyeliner um, wand and you can come in and it gets into nice little tight points and you can just clean in right around the base and get rid of any um, little lines or marks that you may have made with the file. So we're just going to clean it up a little bit. And once all the greenware finishing is done, you're going to go ahead and fire it to the highest firing schedule for the brand of metal clay that you're using. I'm going to go fire this and then I'll be back and we'll start enameling. I fired the piece and I tumbled it for two hours and now I'm ready to prepare it for enamel. When you put, whoops, let me come over here with the water. When you put water onto um, metal, what happens is it beads up and you can see how it's beading up here. I want it to sheet on the metal, not bead up. If it beads up like this, your enamels may pull away from the edge. So I've got um, about one-third water, two-thirds ammonia in this uh, cup and I'm going to use a Scotch-Brite scrubber, scrubber to really clean that surface and to give it a little bit of tooth to hold on to the enamel. All right, so now instead of making those little beads, it's just sheeting on there, and that's what we wanted to see. And then we're going to do the same thing to the front, but it's a little harder to work around the, um, the design. So I'll, I'll do what I can with the, the little scrubber here. And then I'm going to switch to a glass brush. And this is a fiberglass brush, and that's going to let me get a little tighter in around the piece. And I'll just go around and I'll clean it so that our enamels are going to stay where we put them. Once I have it all cleaned up, I'm going to rinse it off and dry it. And at this point, I don't want to touch the surfaces with my fingers because I don't want to put finger oils back on it, which would prevent my enamel from sticking. So only hold it by the edges. And there it is, ready for enamel. And in the next segment, we're going to start enameling it. I'm going to use opaque enamel today, and I'm going to start with the back of the piece. You always have to put enamel on both the front and the back, or your enamels may crack. This is called counter enamel. So I'm using my glove on one hand, and that way I won't get any fingerprints or finger oils onto the piece as I handle it. I'm going to start with this back piece, and I'm going to smear a little, um, smear it, that's a technical term. I'm going to brush a little clear fire on it. Clear fire is enamel adhesive, and that's going to make this stick on there. And I'm being pretty generous with it. It's going to want to pool in the middle, but I have a way of dealing with that that I'll show you in just a moment. And then I'm going to take my enamel, which would have been nice if it was already open, but you know how things go. Um, and when you fill the sifter, don't fill it more than a third of the way. If you fill it too much, it won't sift out properly. So now I'm going to work at the edges. And what that'll do is it'll pull clear fire from the middle so that it doesn't get really thick in the middle and I'll get an even sifting over the entire back. I love this color. This is bitter green. It's one of my favorite opaque colors. It's a very happy color. I'm going to get a nice coating on the back of the piece. All right. So once I have that on there, let me get it off my hand here. First thing is make sure that there isn't any blocking the holes. If you have some enamel blocking the holes, poke it out with a brush because if you block the hole with glass, it's really hard to get it out and enamel is glass. I'm also going to kind of go around the edge and make sure, I'm trying to make sure there's not any out on the, on the side edge. 
At this point, I'm going to put it on a trivet. This is my little firing trivet. And I'll put it on a rack. And I'm going to fire it at 1400 degrees for two to two and a half minutes. Um, I'll take this extra enamel and I'll put it back in the jar. And from my clean paper here, I can just kind of fold this into a little paper funnel, pour that back in so that I don't waste it. All right, I'm going to go fire that and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got the counter enamel fired on. When you first pull this out of the kiln, it's going to turn a very ugly, muddy brown. Don't panic perfectly normal. It doesn't brighten up to its true color until it's completely cooled off. So just go with it. You'll be fine. And now we're ready to do the front side. So I'm going to turn this over. And we have a little detail to work around here. So I'm not going to sift the front. I'm going to wet pack the front. I'm going to take some of this opaque enamel. Now with transparent enamels, you need to screen them to improve the clarity. But Opaques are never going to be clear, so there's no need to screen them. I'm just going to put a little bit in this little cup to work out of, and I'm going to work with it wet. I'm going to put some water here. I'm going to put a generous amount in. I'm going to agitate it a little bit just to get any dust or impurities off. Those will float and the enamel will sink. And so I'll give it a stir, let it sit for a second for the glass to settle. And then I just pour off that cloudy water. And then it's ready to use. All right, so that's ready. And I've got my brush. And let me get these out of my way. And I've got my enamel. And here we go. I'm just going to pick up a little bit. Oh, I need a, here, I'll use this. I'm going to prop it up a little. If I have my container at an angle, it makes it easier to pick up my enamel. So I'm going to pick up a little enamel. I'm going to push it off onto the um, surface of the piece, working around these textured petals. Now, if it starts pulling back from the edge, then your metal isn't clean enough. You, you'll need to clean it again. It shouldn't beat up. It should just lay flat. That's why we did that cleaning with the ammonia. And I'm going to just work around. And I can use the scribe to push the grains up in between those petals without getting it up on the petals. And that's important. You don't want to get the enamel up on your texture. I mean, that's going to be the focal of the silver on this piece is going to be what's the focal point. And if you get a, an individual grain of enamel up, up on the texture, it'll probably burn and turn a rather nasty brown color. All right, I got a little imperfection in there. There's a little black speck in the enamel. I want to get that out now. Oop. Usually I can just scoop it up with a brush. There we go. If it's, if it's in there, when you fire it, it'll be in there forever, so get it out while it's wet. Again, work around the holes. Do not block the holes. I'm going to go all the way around the holes, but I don't need to go in the holes. I also don't need to go on the side edges. Those are going to just be silver. And here again, I'm going to use the needle tool to push it up into the, into the um, tight areas. This is a scribe. I've been saying needle tool, but it's, it's, it's a scribe. All right, there we go. And you can see how adding the color around the design really makes it pop. This is a very happy color. I love this color. It's called bitter green. I tend to call it Granny, uh, Granny Smith apple green. All right, I have all of the enamel on here. And what I want to do is I want to tap the edge of this to kind of settle the enamel. And then I'm going to wick the edge. And that's going to pull the excess moisture out of the enamel. Go around the edge here on the other side. And I'm also going to come up underneath that hole 
that um, got blocked because the water, the surface tension of the water is what's making it stay full of enamel. So then now once I get the water out, I can poke that out and it'll just stay out. You kind of brush that away from the back. So there's that little bit of extra enamel that was on there. So the last thing you do before you fire this is you need to examine it really closely. I'm going to go ahead and put on a magnifying visor and I'm going to get really close in on this so that I can see all the little individual grains of enamel and I want to make sure that there are no grains of enamel on my silver design because if those fire on there, once they're fired on, they're fired on forever. And okay, that's ready to fire. I'll be back in a minute. It's out of the kiln and now we're going to evaluate it and decide whether or not we want to put a second coat on. You don't have to. It's, there's, there's not exactly a right or wrong answer here. If it looks the way you like, you can be done. Um, but if there are some little issues, then you may want to put a second coat on. Um, on mine, I did not get all the way to the edge right here, so I definitely want to be putting some more enamel on there. Also, I've got some uh, variation in the color because there's some thin spots. It's a little thinner here and thicker here, and I'm going to want to address that. So I'm going to go ahead and do a second coat and fire it again, and then I'll be ready to do the finish work. All right, so it's out of the kiln and with the second coat, I really like the second coat. I'm glad I did it. It got rid of that uneven edge and it made the color a lot more even. So now I'm ready to do the finish work. It's really common, it's normal to end up getting enamel on the edges and you want to get that off. I'm going to be using a 400 grit diamond hand sanding pad to clean that off and you have to work wet. I'm going to be continually dipping it in water as I go along. If I grind or sand my enamel dry, I run the risk of chipping or cracking it. So always work wet when you're sanding on enamels. And I'm just going to clean that up. There may be little trivet marks on the back. You'll want to get those off as well. You'll just go around and if you see a little mark, you just grind it off. As soon as I'm done with the, the diamond hand sanding pad um, then, and I've got all of the enamel off the edges, then I'm going to polish it up with a sanding stick. And this is um, 400 grit, 600 grit. And this is going to let me polish it up a little bit. The 400 side is the unprinted side, the 600 side is the printed side. And just a quick, it won't take long to bring it up a little bit. And all I have to do on this is go around the edges. There's really not a lot of finish work to be done on this project. All right, so I've got the edges cleaned up. And now the secret step, and that is you can tumble enamels. It won't hurt the enamel. So I'm going to put this in a tumbler for about half an hour, and that's going to bring up the design again. It's going to make it a little shinier. So I'm going to go tumble it, and then when I come back, I'm going to assemble it with a chain. The piece is out of the tumbler, and you can see that the design shined up beautifully. And I just love this, just the way it is. The edges are nice and polished. It looks great. So let's go ahead and put it onto a chain. I'm going to start by cutting some lengths, and I'm going to make an adjustable length chain. It's going to be, so one side is going to be shorter than the other. I'm going to start by measuring out about seven and a half inches. Cut that off. And then the other side is going to be about ten, ten and a half inches. And I'm going to get rid of the little small bits. This, this particular chain has short and long um, links and I want to hook to the long links. So I'm going to take off the little, the little short links. There we go. All right, and I'm going to cut the other side. And voila, I have, oops, I've got one more little piece to cut off here. I don't want those small links on the ends. I want the long links on the ends. When you're assembling 
um, a necklace, the clasp should go on the right hand side. So I'm going to start by putting the short chain on the right hand side and I'll, then I'll put the long chain on the left hand side. And I have a little jump ring here. Now when you open jump rings, you should never open them like this. That's going to deform them and they're going to get weak. You should always open them like a door, so you're going to open them like this. And I'm going to use two pairs of pliers to open the jump rings. So I'll grab one side with one pair of pliers and the other with the other. And I'm just going to open that up. Now I can thread on my pendant and I can thread on this chain. And then when I close it up, I want to have the two sides sort of click past each other so that I'm getting a really tight fit um, and the two ends are pressing together so that it's not going to come apart. There's one side. Open up the next one. Same thing. Want a nice tight fit on my jump ring. And now I'm going to put on the findings. I've got a clasp, and remember this clasp goes on the right side. Open that up, slide it on, and then I like to have, on an adjustable length, I like to have a little dangle to keep the extra chain hanging down your back instead of flying all over the place. And I just got a little connector piece, and this one has, it has a loop on, connector pieces have loops on both ends. So all I did was clip off the other end and sand it down a little bit so it was smooth. And I'm going to attach that to the other end. And we'll loop this on there. Add the chain. Here we go. And then when I clasp it, I can just hook it wherever I need to to make it the length I want. So it'll hang where I want it to hang. And the little extra piece dangles down the back and is cute and decorative. If you've enjoyed making this project, you might like some of the projects in my videos. I have two instructional videos. They're both two DVD sets. One's enameling on copper clay and one's enameling on silver clay. They each have three full and complete projects totally stepped out for you. I think you'll like that. I hope you enjoyed this and tune in for my next project. Visit our learning center at cooltools.us for more cool jewelry making videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, Follow us on Twitter and be sure to sign up for our email list to be the first to hear about new videos, new products and other cool stuff from Cool Tools.